<clears throat> Welcome to the 113th Canadian Angus Association Annual General Meeting, and uh, this is new for all of us. My name is Bob Hahn, actually your current president of the uh, Canadian Angus Association. Uh, this virtual world is different. Uh, Zoom is becoming part of our new normal, and it's not so normal at all, frankly. Uh, so this uh, Zoom call is a webinar format. Uh, we encourage you to ask questions. If you move your cursor to the bottom of the screen, you'll find the Q&A box. We encourage you to ask questions, and uh, we will uh, we have a monitor here uh, looking at all those questions and keeping track of those questions. We will answer as many of those questions as we can. We're going to put those questions right in on the slot right before the foundation financial statements and um, uh, foundation report. So we apologize for any of the technical difficulties you got on your side. We're trying our best to do our best here, here at Angus Central. And thank you to our production team that's in the background here. So I do want to acknowledge uh, a couple things as we go forward. Uh, COVID and the new normal is anything but normal. Uh, social distancing has created barriers and, it, and to effective communication, everything from bull sales to dealing with your customers uh, and employees have, have been challenged. So my personal experience covers all of the above. Uh, many of my ag clients and business clients <coughs> have found that they have become, have to become, be, become creative in terms of how they're doing their business going forward. On my farm, we cranked up the sales of bought beef uh, directly to the consumer. The new normal is anything but normal. And frankly, from my point of view, it sucks. I do want to highlight a couple of things all from uh, the last year uh, for your association here in Angus. Number one is uh, our financial position. Uh, we built a very healthy organization going forward. Uh, you're going to see in a few minutes when Miles presents the financial statements that uh, we have very positive results for 2019. Uh, I can also reassure you that 2020 is looking very, very strong as well. We must uh, uh, continue to adapt to the current situations. Uh, we cannot remain static. And why do I say that? It's all because I truly believe that the traditional revenue sources are not going to be the same going forward. The traditional registrations and transfers isn't going to be enough to sustain our association and to create value for our members. Number two, I think, in this last year is the relationships. Uh, we built extremely strong uh, building even better relationships with uh, our uh, neighbors to the south. Uh, started in uh, June uh, with a CAB meeting here in Calgary. Uh, we had dinner and uh, frankly a great discussion and a, at a place where we could uh, present our ideas about including uh, red hides and black hides. Uh, and and uh, we were invited then to join uh, the CAB annual meeting in December of 2019. Miles and I went down and it was truly a, a great um, uh, event and uh, highlighted by a CAB state dinner at their headquarters. Uh, a couple other events in their terms of relationships, uh, I was able to go down to the Red Angus Association annual meeting in September of 19. And you know what? Their issues are the same as our issues and it's very reassuring to know that we're all trying to improve uh, the Angus cow, think, thinking about improving their feet um, we're thinking about data collection, we're thinking about member education, all the same issues that we deal with up here. It's reassuring to know that they're dealing with down in the south as well. In September, we held our Canadian Angus board meeting at the American Angus head office in St. Joe's. Uh, one of the main purposes was to create that relationship and build that relationship with the American Angus. And it was a greatly, a truly a, a great place uh, to have our, our board meeting. The picture in the middle of your screen is uh, of our board meeting at uh, American Angus uh, boardroom. That was highlighted on that trip. We got to go to the American Angus Hall of Fame and see a bunch of headshots or, or head uh, mounts of some of the industry giants of the Black Angus. Number three, I think I want to uh, uh, thank you, thank the board members. I want to thank everybody for uh, letting me serve as chair over the last 12 months. Uh, if I think about our board meetings, I think the words open, frank, robust, and inclusive are some of the adjectives I'd use to describe those board meetings. Getting stronger and stronger and stronger. <clears throat> We've ramped up our board education. 
And never before we had our committees work as hard as they have, and we expect them to work even harder going forward. I do want to especially acknowledge the governance committee this last year. One of the major pieces of work that we were able to accomplish was to adopt and approve uh, a new governance manual. And uh, it will continue to have us work on visionary uh, pieces of work uh, rather than uh, becoming operational at all. Um, the uh, uh, committee structure is going to be strong and uh, the governance manual uh, will have that happen. Number four, I think, is the CEO and uh, the staff at the Canadian Angus. Without uh, their input, um, this association would not be the same whatsoever. We were blown away, first of all, last June in our board meeting with 21 new business ideas that Miles presented to us as a board. Uh, unbelievable. Um, to date, I think I can comfortably say that within 12 months, we have solid traction on at least 12, 10 of those initiatives, and we look forward to uh, building those initiatives forward. Once again, we're looking for revenue sources to help create value for our members. <clears throat> we do have challenges, and uh, uh, our challenges, I think, are back to COVID-19. Uh, nothing has uh, disrupted the world as much as this. And uh, so I believe that as we work, uh, we've already started to work on the 2021 budget and trying to figure out exactly how COVID is gonna affect our association and our membership uh, for the next year. I believe some of our other challenges include the ownership of data, collection of data, and to see that we can get some value to back to our members for that data. And I believe as I started my, one of my first uh, messages to all of our members was that we need to continue to tell our story. Uh, the, the red meat story is a very powerful story. The alternate protein sources stories are certainly out there, but we need to continue to tell our story about uh, supplying meat for a very healthy lifestyle. So thank you very much. At this point, I'd like to uh, uh, take a, a time now. Uh, we as members of the Canadian Ag Association, we wish to acknowledge and pay respect to those members that are no longer with us. Uh, please take a few minutes to pay tribute to these members now. Welcome to the 113th Annual AGM of the Canadian Angus Association. I'm Miles Immigrant. For the first time ever, we will be communicating through a virtual platform. We understand all the challenges our members have faced um, through the challenging year, but confident their times are ahead. We look forward to the world getting back to normal as soon as possible. One thing through all this is that people still need to eat. And the greater appreciation of where our food comes from and the health and safety aspect of how it is produced will become more important and more evident in the future. It is a great pleasure to share with you the 2019 financials of the Canadian Angus Association. These statements have been audited by KPMG, who have performed the Canadian Angus um, audit for the past over 25 years. Our annual report is located on our website, um, but we have a list of the statements on operations listed here that we'll leave up for about 10 or 15 seconds um, that I'll be referring to um, through most of this presentation. I'm going to speak to a few aspects of the statement of operations for the year ending December 2019 and some of the highlights that aided in those results. In 2019, we are happy to share that we posted a net income on operation of 221,269, which is a substantial difference from 2018, where we saw a loss of 222,375. This was a 5.5% net return, slightly above the target of 4 to 5% on an annual basis that a traditional nonprofit such as ourselves would target. Our goal um, as we move forward is to remain slightly above this mark as we look over the next few years to continue to rebuild our cash flow and add to our reserve. A few of the major highlights um, within the financial statements saw an overall decline of revenue of 655,000, but also a decline of expenses in the area of $1.1 million, 
we saw the reason for a $450,000 improvement in net profit year over last. One of the key revenue items that affected revenue in 2019 was the change in our green tag program logistics. Until June 2019, the Canadian Ang Association had a dealer license with CCIA that allowed the Canadian Ang Association to sell directly to our producers. In June, this uh, dealer license was no longer an option. I've had a number of inquiries from members um, throughout the year on why Canadian Ang Association chose to go this route. And I would like to stress at this point that this was not a decision made by the Canadian Ang staff or the board of directors, it was a decision mandated to us. We prefer to be able to offer this service to our members, but due to the change in the CCIA strategy, we will continue to work with CCIA, support them on their initiatives and implementing this program and growing the green tank program. This change in how it was administered in June saw a change of revenue of approximately $460,000 to the revenue, but also on the expense side, on the other side of the ledger by the same amount. The association's core revenues of registrations, transfers, memberships have been on a slight decline over the last five to six years. In 2019, we saw a decline of those core revenues by $155,000. We are in that part of the cattle cycle where herd inventories are down as low as we've probably seen in recent years. In 2020, we had started to see this to re uh, rebound and we expected it to rebound and we saw that in the first quarter of this year. We all see hit with COVID, we will continue to watch how COVID affects our industry and our association as we move forward. A key aspect of the expenses of 2019 was the launch of the new strategic plan. This plan provided direction, vision, focus, and led to some creation of efficiencies in a number of areas. We saw an array of efficiencies from programs such as Angus Now, uh, as one example, as well as negotiation with suppliers and vendors on services that create efficiencies in our office and administration expenses. We were able to explore new ways to create efficiencies and value through our services that we offered to ensure where we were making investments, spending our resources in our strategic direction. In 2019, we were able to complete our allocation of 3% of our core revenues to our reserve, which now sits at $368,000. As we saw in 2020, the importance of having a reserve for many organizations became evident. We must continue to prepare ourselves to remain viable through the next challenge that we could be faced um, in the near future or the long-term future. Our cash flow ended 2019 at $368,000, um, a much increase from 2018. One of the measures we've been using to access the health and the strength of our organization and the financial position has been the use of ratios. The most common ratio I've been using is what we call the current or liquidity ratio. It really measures our, on a monthly basis, on an annual basis, our ability to meet all our vendor needs and obligations. We finished 2019 in a much more comfortable position, but we'd love to continue to improve on that to get us to where our ideal range will be. So we have no cash flow issues moving forward. I'd like to thank all the staff, as well as the support of the board of directors for helping us at the Canadian Association achieve this financial profitability in 2019. And we look forward to making continued improvements to this financial picture in 2020. A number of highlights marked 2019 that have led us to developing a much healthier organization. First of all, was the launch of our strategic plan in 2019, in this last spring. The entire staff participated with input, ideas, and helped identify areas of improvement, opportunity, and challenges that we may face in the future. This plan gave us direction, focus, and a vision to operate. It's amazing what can be accomplished when we all pull in the same direction. As discussed, the return of profitability was a highlight of 2019, but it was also job number one when I joined the association in January and cited that we were able to achieve that um, in such a short time frame. As Bob mentioned earlier, the building of relationships was a major initiative in 2019. We have many industry partners and allies that helped create new opportunities for us in 2019. These partners were many, but I like that one a few. We've had excellent collaboration with our American partners on both the American Ag Association and the Red Ag Association of America. We all face similar challenges and opportunities, and the ability to work together, learn from each other, continue to strengthen all our organizations. Our ability to explore and work together on research projects, genetic evaluations, and improving trade between our nation has value to all our parties. In September, the entire Canadian Angus Board, we had the opportunity to hold our September board meeting in St. Joseph, Missouri at the headquarters of the American Angus Association. Their transparency allowed us to review opportunities, 
create new ideas, and explore similar challenges that we all face, and how they can be handled as we move forward. The benefits of this collaboration for us as an association will be seen for years to come as we develop and implement tools and ideas that came as a result of that visit. Also, as Rob mentioned earlier in December, we had the opportunity to travel to Weezer, Ohio, and attend a part of the Certified Angus Board meetings and engage with them on the opportunities for CAB in Canada and the current state of the beef business in Canada. We've had many other positive developments with all our industry partners in 2019. We value these relationships greatly and we look forward to continuing to work with all partners to provide a greater strength to the association. At Convention 2019, we began a new project to explore an index development project to create a new tool for Canadian Association members. And while we understand that these tools may not work for all members, it was an opportunity that was missed in the past, an opportunity we didn't want to miss moving forward. Um, our members participated in a survey to outline their needs that was used in the tool development in 2019 that is currently nearing the end of that project. I look forward to the opportunity to share in the final results with my board of directors and looking at the opportunities that can come out of this and how we can share this tool with our members in the future. Communication was a key theme for us and an important part of our strategic plan. We strongly felt we needed a communication platform to allow our members to remain informed on everything Angus, from the development of new tools, updates and research, and opportunities within our Angus community. I would like to thank all supporters of our first issue of Angus Life, from the breeders to industry partners alike. Your support was critical in allowing this project to be a great success. You may have questions on where it was shown in the financial statements. Because Angus Life was not released until January, the revenue, expenses, and net profit for Angus Life 2020 are shown in our January 2020 financial statements and will be shown in the 2020 annual report. At this time, though, I'm very excited to be able to announce that all profits generated from Angus Life will be 100% reinvested into three key programs in 2020. These will be programs designed to grow the Angus brand and our image and create new opportunities for our members. These are opportunities that we have never engaged in from the association in the past. I look forward to announcing these three programs and projects that only were made possible by the participation of Angus Life um, on that side of it. So watch for these announcements over the coming months. One other key project of 2019 was the development of a new Angus website. This was something I heard from day one when I joined the association, a project that was a high priority to get started. The project was a nine month process and thanks to our marketing team and Bradbury and Company in their support of this project. We were excited to launch this new site last week and I look forward to continuing the building of this new site as we have a number of new and unique features that we look forward to adding over the next few months. In 2019, we had a committee of breeders join us here at the Canadian Angus office to weigh in on the support of our Angus meat brand and how best us as an association is a play in that department. We were excited to relaunch the Ranchers Endorsed program to recognize the brands that value the work done by the Angus breeder and support the Angus brand. We look forward to adding to these partners here in 2020 and 2021 and look forward to being able to work with these partners in a greater role than we have in the past on the branded Angus programs. The launch of Angus Now created new opportunities for our members to have more control in their hands and in the long term create new efficiencies for the association. We know this hasn't been perfected yet, and we look forward to continue this, make improvements to these programs. And I thank for all members for the constructive feedback that we have received to help shape this program. We look forward over the next year to have a better handle on these efficiencies created by these programs. So I have the opportunity to sit down with our board of directors to discuss how we can share those efficiencies with our membership. The Canadian Angus Foundation continue to support of the Angus breed with the commitment to research in 2019 to ensure the Angus breed continues to lead the beef industry forward. This investment allowed the Canadian Angus Association to leverage this, their support for additional dollars that went to projects such as the higher meaning and response, feet and legs research, teat and nutters, index development, global Angus evaluation, and 3D camera technology that we're excited to move forward with here this fall. Without the support from the Angus Foundation, the advancement of these projects would not be possible. And finally, at Convention 2019, we were excited to launch the Canadian Angus History Book. An extensive amount of work went into this project and thanks all involved for the creation of this project. There's still many books available. If anybody hasn't received their book, they make a great gift. 
I think often stays around the coin. So in closing, thanks to everyone for the support of 2019 to help the Canadian Association have a great year. I look forward to the new opportunities of 2020 that will continue to advance the Angus breed. Unfortunately, this year, we were not able to have our convention in New Brunswick as many of us were looking forward to. But we look forward to 2022 and returning to New Brunswick where we will hold our next convention. At this time, I'm gonna invite Trent Liebert by video, the president of the Saskatchewan Angus Association to introduce the 2021 convention in Saskatoon. Greetings from sunny and windy Saskatchewan. If you're tired of being cooped up in your house, come here where you can watch your dog run away for three days or your hat blow away for about a day and a half. I had hoped to be issuing this invitation in New Brunswick, but our current situation has forced us all to adapt and hopefully we will be able to gather in the Maritimes in 2022. That said, I take this opportunity to invite all Angus enthusiasts to join us in the Bridge City June 10th through 12th, 2021 for our Canadian Angus Annual General Meeting and Convention. Saskatoon is the artistic and entertainment capital of the prairies. Come enjoy the beautiful riverfront along the South Saskatchewan. Tour the world-class research facility that is the Livestock and Forage Centre of Excellence. Stay for the hospitality and tour some of Canada's finest Angus herds. We look forward to seeing you and being your hosts in June 2021 at the Paris of the Prairies. Welcome to Saskatoon, one of the sunniest, youngest and most welcoming cities in all of Canada. I've heard some people think we're as quiet and flat as our landscape. Well, Go, After you, go, please. Go ahead, okay, go ahead. sure. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd like you to Are go you first. Sure? Yeah, please. Thank you. <laughs> sorry. If this is quiet and flat, then count me in. Tonight would be our traditional president's reception that would take place at our convention and AGM. At this time, I would like to recognize Bob for his commitment and his service to the Canadian Angus Association Board of Directors. I first met Bob back in November uh, when I first met with the Canadian Angus Association Board to discuss joining the association team. It was very clear at that time Bob was a visionary and always looking ways to add value to the organization. Bob joined the Canadian Angus Association in 2013 and has made significant contributions to the future structure of the association. I've always considered myself well adverse on the financial side, but Bob's support over the last year, um, as we look at monthly statement, annual reports, audited observations and processes, has created a greater understanding on the financial side, not only to myself, but to the entire board of directors. Bob was a leading force in looking at solutions to help strengthen board staff relations and transparency. Um, and help lead the new governing structure of the Canadian Angus as we build a healthier organization. I've had the opportunity to travel with Bob on a couple of occasions, including 2019 showdown in BC, uh, certified Angus board meetings in Ohio, as well as a trip on um, September to Missouri. His contributions were well noted and much appreciated at those events and brought a greater respect to the association for his participation at these events. We share an appreciation for fine wine and have enjoyed our time being able to share a glass over strategic discussions. Bob has been never shy to explore what is possible and think outside the box. 
So at this time, I'd like to thank Bob for his contributions, his support, guidance, and friendship over the last year and a half. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Virtual. Yeah, virtual. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's my pleasure to uh, uh, introduce you and to review uh, the current retiring and incoming board of directors. So uh, we'll just go through the slides here. Tom Duval, British Columbia. Retiring director, George Baxter, Alberta. Continuing director, Brian Geis, Alberta. Incoming director, Greg Pugh, Alberta. Continuing director, Brett Wildman, Alberta. Continuing director, Dale Eason, Saskatchewan. Mike Howe, Saskatchewan. Sheldon Kyle, Saskatchewan. Incoming President, Sean Birmingham, Manitoba. Ontario, Graham McLean. Retiring Director, Ryan Curry, Quebec. Incoming Director, David Sample, Quebec. And Trevor Walsh, Maritimes, Retiring Director and Past President of your Canadian Aid Association. Ronnie Ford, Incoming Director, the Maritimes. Uh, one last thank you to our Retiring Directors, George Baxter, Ryan Curry, and Trevor Welch, thank you for your contributions to the association. You've helped us uh, create and uh, create that road for the future. And we know that we're in good hands with your uh, contributions in the past. So once again, thank you very, very much. At this time, I'd like to uh, introduce the uh, video from our incoming president, Sean Birmingham, and introducing uh, the uh, Canadian directors and the new executive going forward. Sean? Hello, I'm Sean Birmingham, and I am honored to become the president of the Canadian Angus Association for this upcoming year. Over the past 14 years, I have served on the Manitoba Angus Board and the Canadian Angus Board. And during this time, I've realized the importance of having strong relationships with not only our membership, but also our um, industry partners. Over the next year, I would like to continue to strengthen those relationships. Our board is here to serve you, the membership. We need your input and your ideas to help strengthen our association. We use that information all the time to help come up with ways to better improve our breed. So I'd like to encourage each and every one of you to reach out to a board of director to have those conversations. To, so we can develop this breed into something greater than what it already is today. Angus is the leader in the beef industry. And I think our association has a unique opportunity to help shape the industry for the future. Our board is always looking for new ways to not only help our members, but help make a positive impact on the commercial sector. If we can make the right relationships, Angus could have a larger impact on the beef industry. With all the uncertainty in the marketplace, we need to have the willingness to change how we operate in relation to the future marketplace. I would also like to take this time to acknowledge the foundation. Um, the foundation is something that I'm very passionate about. I've been on involved with the foundation board for a few years and they just do so much great work. It's such a great uh, asset we have involved with our association. Um, the support they do with the juniors is incredible. 
and I've been lucky enough to be involved in some of the junior events like Goal and Showdown, and I've also helped in the judging process for some of the scholarships and other things. And it's very exciting for me to see the great youth we have in, in our association. And I'd just like to thank everyone that has um, supported the foundation in the past and those who uh, support the foundation in the future. It's a great uh, asset that we have. Um, the foundation also helps support all members through um, the archives and history, as well as the research uh, side of things. They're starting to play a very big role in helping with uh, research for our association and our the growth of our association. I'm also really excited about our ex the executive team this year. Uh, Bob Hahn, who's done an excellent job over the past year, will move into the past president position, uh, myself in the present position. And I'm very happy to announce that she Sheldon Kyle is moving into the president-elect role. Sheldon, I, I think, will be a great asset um, to our association in a president role and I know he's excited for uh, what what's to come in the association and I'm excited for his leadership in the future. So with that, I thank everyone. Um, I'm super happy to be in this position and uh, I'm very looking forward to what the next couple years bring uh, for not only me as, as president, um, but uh, for this association. And I'm, uh, I've just enjoyed my time um, being involved and I'm happy with how things have progressed and I just love how to love watching things grow in our association. We're doing a great job of um, keeping things uh, focused on the future and we look forward to the upcoming year. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. I look forward to working with Sean as he takes his president role and congratulations to Sheldon. I look forward to working with you as well. At this time, I'd like to welcome the past president of the Canadian Angus Association, Trevor Welsh, to introduce or welcome Bob into the past president club. Welcome, everyone, to the Canadian Angus Association 2020 COVID virtual AGM. I'm coming to you today from my kitchen. Uh, at the base of Garvey Mountain in Glassville, New Brunswick. It happens to be a nice sunny day here today. Everybody's busy cropping, a lot of grain and potatoes in the ground, and most cows are getting to pasture out here at the, uh, around the 1st of June. Today, I have the distinct pleasure to welcome the Canadian Angus Association President, Bob Hahn, to the distinguished group known as the Past Presidents Club. I met Bob for the first time when I joined the board six years ago. And to be honest, I was not sure what to think of him. He didn't strike me as a cattleman, but he certainly did fit the mold that I had perceived as an accountant. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm an engineer by trade, so one thing that Bob and I have in common is that we deal with numbers on a daily basis. One board meeting back a few years ago, during a break, uh, Bob was sitting intently watching his laptop. As I peered over his shoulder, to see what he was watching, I noticed that he was watching the cameras back at his barns uh, while some cows were calving. Since I was in the process of setting up cameras at my own farm, Bob and I had a discussion of the setup that he has, how it was an advantage while traveling or even at work during the day so he could see what cattle were doing. And so uh, he went over some pros and cons with me of things that I should be looking for and what I could do with my own uh, future setup. Everybody has a hobby happens that Bob's hobbies are sailing ships and flying planes. Many evening during a hospitality suite or perhaps during a break at a board meeting, Bob has regaled us with um, some fun and maybe not so fun things that he has uh, done or had happened to him while in his flight training or perhaps while sailing off the coast of BC. As I got to know Bob better over the last six years, I learned a lot about his cattle herd of black and red Angus, the genetics he's used, some of the embryos that he has purchased and incorporated in his herd. And Bob has quite a herd uh, of very nice looking cattle. 
about a year and a half ago, I was had, I had the opportunity. I was at uh, Farm Fair in Edmonton, and Bob asked if I'd like to go for a tour of his place just outside of Edmonton. Of course, I jumped at the chance. Who wouldn't want to go see another rancher's cattle and, and uh, the setup that they have? He has a very functional setup, cabin barns, yearly bull pens, and fields all make his job easier. To be honest, I was a bit jealous. Bob's knowledge of accounting has certainly been a huge asset to the board of directors and to the Canadian Ang Association. And one thing about Bob, he's always willing to share his knowledge with the directors, uh, you know, the, the knowledge that he has about accounting and practices. And Bob's always willing to help those of us less versed in the intricacies of financial statements, get a better handle on where the, where the association was financially. It certainly was a big plus. About a year and a half ago, Bob and I and our search committee worked very closely together in the hiring of our new CEO, Miles, something that uh, we are both very proud of. In closing, I'm proud to call Bob Hahn a friend and colleague in the Angus business. Welcome, Bob, to the Past Presidents Club. Hopefully someday very soon when restrictions are lifted and, and the pandemic is behind us, I'll be able to bring you your very own uh, past president's pin, properly shake your hand and welcome you to the club of distinguished past presidents from the Canadian Angus Association. Thank you very much, Bob, for all that you've done for the association, uh, your financial knowledge, your cattle knowledge, and your uh, knowledge of board practices. Has certainly been a huge asset to the Canadian Angus Association, and I'm glad to, glad to call you a friend. Thank you very much from sunny Glassville, New Brunswick. Thanks, Trevor. Um, at this time, traditionally, we would invite all our past presidents onto the stage. Obviously, we're not able to do that this year. And so in lieu of that, this year, we're going to have a short slide show presentation of the past presidents for the last 35 years. Earlier today, on behalf of Trevor Welsh, I was able to present Bob with his past president pin. So it gives me a great pleasure to uh, introduce and uh, honor or uh, uh, identify our honorary presidents for 2019. Um, our first honorary president is from Alberta, Dave Dury. Dave started farming at the age of 17 with his brothers Bud and Jim. Early on, he realized a need to grow grain and raise cattle to offset the fluctuations in markets and prices of either commodity. Dave and his wife Pat have four sons. David. White, Dwayne, and Douglas. The family has embraced the changes over the last 57 years that Dave Sr. and Pat have been together. In 2020, the Dury Farm will have the status of being a century farm. Saskatchewan, <clears throat> Colin Sauter. Colin grew up on a mixed grain farm in Southwest Saskatchewan. 
Upon obtaining his degree in animal science from the University of Saskatchewan, and after some assistant teaching at the university, Colin returned to the family farm in 1979. Colin has served on the Saskatchewan and Canadian Angus Association boards. He was the president of the Saskatchewan board in 1985. One of his proudest moments as a director of the Canadian Angus Association was being the chair of the Breed Development Committee where they negotiated the first contract with ADRI. Colin unfortunately passed away suddenly and unexpectedly on Thanksgiving 2019. Tim Baker, Manitoba. In the words of Tim, I take great honor in this nomination as I am the third generation of my family to have received it. My grandpa Bob, my dad Bernie, and now me. Angus has been part of Tim's life from as early as he can remember. Tim acknowledges people like Jack Hart of Brookmere Angus who encouraged him to become involved with the Manitoba Angus Association. Tim has served many years as a director of the Manitoba Angus Association, including two years as president. In the words of Tim, if it wasn't for the Manitoba Angus Association and serving as president, I wouldn't have met my wife, Wendy, at an annual meeting in Calgary. Ontario, Ron and Linda Bryant. Ron and Linda purchased their first purebred Angus in 1972. Their involvement in 4-H led to their interest in showing competitively in 1995. Ron and Linda were awarded the designation of Premier Breeder in 1997. Ron has been the director of the East, Eastern Ontario Angus Club for about 30 years. Ron has also served as a director of the Ontario Angus Association. Thank you to Ron and Linda for your contribution to the Canadian Angus history. Maritimes, Peter Estabrooks. Having lived in Toronto for about 10 years, Peter returned to New Brunswick in early 1970s, or in the 70s. In Peter's words, my wife Debbie and I were hooked on the moment we saw those black cattle in the Green Valley with the light just so. It was perfect. They purchased their first purebreds in 1986. Peter has served as president of the New Brunswick Angus Association from 2001 to 2005 and was president of the Maritime, Maritime Angus Association in 1996 and 1998. Peter's contribution to the Angus meetings and events is truly appreciated. Thank you, everyone. Great. Uh, at this time, I uh, will switch over to some of the questions that came in from the moderator and do our best to answer them. So the first question, will we be approving the minutes of the 2019 AGM tonight? Uh, great question. So due to COVID, uh, the Minister David Truss has waived the requirement for a breed association to host the AGM this year. However, we felt it was very important for us to continue to engage and communicate with our membership um, during this time. So the 2019 AGM minutes will be ratified at the next time we can be in person at AGM, which will be in Saskatoon in 2021. Uh, the next question was about surveys. So when doing surveys, does every member ship to the same vote? Uh, and is there a consideration given to herd with the larger numbers? Um, yes, another great, great question. So when we do surveys, such as we did when we, uh, we do our index development project, um, service uh, a vote is a vote, we analyze it. But we have the opportunity to analyze um, the information we receive in a variety of different ways. We can look at it by different color, red or black. We can look at it from logistical reasons, from profits wise, um, but also from herd size. And we do look at it to see what the differences are between any of those different demographic types on that side of it. That will be all the questions for, that we have received. Um, so thank you for the people who submitted those questions here. At this time, we will be going to Kurt Wildman, the chair of the Canadian Angus Foundation, with a report and an update on the foundation. Hello, my name is Kirk Wildman, and I'm the current chair of the Canadian Angus Foundation. I will be presenting today's report on behalf of the CAF Board of Directors, our Executive Director, Belinda Wagner, and our Treasurer, Miles Amakar. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought upheaval to the entire world, and the Canadian Angus Foundation was certainly affected as well. With the cancellation of the Canadian Angus Convention this spring, our board made the decision to cancel the Building the Legacy sale 
for June as well. In these uncertain financial times, we felt it was prudent to not ask our members to both donate and purchase in a sale this year. We certainly thank our past donors and buyers from past sales and plan to continue on with the Building the Legacy sale in 2021. This left us with a large shortfall in our 2020 budget. So decisions were made to scale back on some of the programs that the foundation funds. Bursaries and travel vouchers will not be used as most travel has been curtailed in a major way. With Canadian Junior Angus Showdown revamped to an, an online platform, there will be considerably less expenses involved with their show this year as well. The decision was made to continue on as usual with scholarships, our major awards, and some of the heifer vouchers. The CAF is also continuing to fund research, as well as working on a living history project for the archives. The board's mandate is to continue to fulfill the goals of enhancing Angus youth research and the archives, all while being fiscally responsible in these unprecedented times. At this time, I would give a bit of an overview of the past year since we met at convention in 2019. In July, my family and I attended the 2019 Canadian Junior Angus Showdown in beautiful Barrier, BC. The facilities were excellent and the event was very well run and well attended. A nice bonus of having the show in BC is that many of their 4-H shows are in September, so there were a large number of juniors showing their Angus steers at the show. A large group of kids were exposed to the Junior Angus, Angus experience for the first time and with the help of BC breeders, I expect new breeders will be created by this exposure. Three BC juniors won heifer vouchers during the show and purchased their heifers later in the fall from BC breeders. The Angus Roots and CJA scholarships were awarded during the show as well. Another nice part of the show is that with foundation Funding, many juniors from across the country were awarded travel bursaries so they could take part in showdown. You can't help but be inspired when spending a few days with our Angus youth. In October, the CAF had an in-person board meeting where we met with investment advisors to help us learn about different ways of donating to charitable foundations. We also met James Bradbury, whose company redesigned our CAA, CAF, and CJA websites this spring to talk about branding and marketing. Kim McDon McConnell also facilitated a session with us, helping us to focus on goal setting and visioning what the next five to 10 years could possibly look like. We came out of that meeting energized and excited for the future. The fall gave us a chance to visit with many members and see Lexi Hicks represent our foundation as the Robert C. McAfee Ambassador. Lexi is a very well-spoken, vivacious young lady that has represented her association very well across the country. With this situation this spring, we were unable to have our 2020 ambassador competition. So Lexi will continue on as ambassador and hopefully she can finish up with some of her activities next spring. We will once again be seeking a new ambassador in 2021. Also in the fall, Three names were picked out of the hat and three more heifer vouchers were awarded to members belonging to the Canadian Junior Angus Association. Sales for the Angus History Book were also strong and there are only a limited amount remaining. So if you need one, please contact us. The Guiding Outstanding Leaders Conference took place in Calgary this February and I had the opportunity to attend. Our Angus youth really impressed with their eagerness to learn, network and have fun. Our Angus future is in great shape in whatever way these young folks become associated with agriculture in the future. Five outstanding junior members took part in a competition to be awarded the Legacy Scholarships, totaling $11,000. Morgan Davey, Alana Higgins, Hallie Adams, Beverly Booth, and Sarah McDonald really impressed the judges with their poise and general agricultural knowledge. One heifer voucher was awarded to a member taking part in the conference as well. The Goal Conference is an outstanding opportunity for our youth to get outside the barn and really learn new skills that not only will help them as Angus breeders, but general citizens as well. At this time, I have the pleasure of announcing some of our awards traditionally announced at convention. The 2020 Junior Angus Stockman of the Year is awarded 
to Jill McCleary from Red Deer County, Alberta. The 2020 Outstanding Young Angus Breeder is Matthew Flurry from Aberdeen, Saskatchewan. The 2020 Dick Turner Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Sarah McDonald from Rock Creek, BC. Congratulations to all three of those young breeders. I would like to thank the board for their dedication to the mission and vision of the Canadian Angus Foundation over the past year. Past Chair Sylvia Jackson, Directors Noreen Blair and Jackie Brown Freeman, as well as CAA Representative Ryan Curry will be retiring for the, from the board. And we thank them so much for what they did over the years for the foundation. There is not time in this speech to list all their work, but please thank them for their years of service when you see run into them at Angus events over the next few years. In September, we will be having two new members join our board of directors. Chad Lorenz is a lifelong Angus member and a past Junior Angus Ambassador and CJA President. He also has experience in the seaman and sail consulting business and will really be an asset to our board. Brad Fournier was an Angus breeder in his junior years and worked at various aspects with Alberta agriculture, specializing in the cattle sector in his work for the government. He is currently the executive director of the Alberta Diabetes Foundation and is excited to use his experience in fundraising and marketing to help the Angus Foundation flourish. We will also have some new representation from the CAA board that will be announced following my address. As we work through these trying times, I believe the Canadian Angus Foundation is poised to do big things in the future. And on behalf of our board of directors, we thank you for your confidence in our stewardship of your hard earned dollars invested in the CAF. Thank you. As treasurer of the Canadian Angus Foundation, I'd like to introduce the 2020, 2021 board of directors of the foundation. First, Executive Director Linda Wagner, serving uh, two year terms Brad Fournier, Chad Lorenz, Susan McKinnon, Raina Cernick, and Kurt Wildman, and serving a one year term Brad Chappelle, Cecily Fleming, Wes Olenek, and Tammy Riby. Representing the Canadian Angus Board of Directors, Dale Easton, Brian Geis, and Graham McLean. At this time, I'm excited to announce our guest speaker of the evening. J.P. Chervais is Vice President and Chief Agriculture Economist at Farm Credit, Farm Credit Canada. His insights help guide strategy and monitor risk throughout the corporation. In addition to acting as FTC spokesperson on economic matters, J.P. provides commentary on the agriculture industry through video and the FCC Ag Economist blog. Prior to joining the FCC in 2010, J.P. was a professor of Ag Economics at North Carolina State University and Laval University. J.P. is the past president of the Canadian Ag Economics Society. He obtained his PhD in Economics from Iowa State University in 1999. Uh, perfect time to talk about COVID-19 and the beef cattle sector and what we can expect for the rest of 2020. Thank you, J.P., and I look forward to your presentation. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Thank you for your questions. Thanks, Miles, for a great meeting. I just want to personally thank our production crew, uh, Tina Zakowski and Tiani Evans. Uh, without you, this would not be possible. And uh, the, the new normal is uh, we're getting more comfortable all the time. So once again, from my side, thank you very much. And uh, thank you uh, for the great year that I had as being your president. Thank you as well. So from my side, I'd like to thank all the staff, board members, all our members and our industry partners for making a great year. I look forward to 2020 to be an even greater year, 2021 even greater after that. Look forward to seeing everybody down the road. Thank you. Thank you very much.